Hey boys and girls, this is Wild Man Woods here, part of the TWC, the wrestling community, presents Wild Man Willis's review of WWE Backlash, emanating from the Richmond Coliseum in Richmond, Virginia. Shout out to the crew. We got to see y'all all night in the front row and in the corner, having fun with the matches. So here goes my review. All in all, for a pay-per-view that didn't have so much build-up leading into the event, they had some really good matches to the show. And it also did something I have not seen in a long time, a pay-per-view that lasted only for about 2 hours and 40 minutes. Not counting the pre-show. So, all in all, it was straight and to the point. It wasn't dragged out like many of the other pay-per-views that have been going on. So, hopefully, WWE has learned their lesson with dragging out their pay-per-views for so long. So, here goes my rundown and review of the matches. We started off with the six-pack challenge for the... SmackDown Women's Championship. We had Alexa Bliss, Naomi, Natalia, Nikki Bella, Carmella, and Becky Lynch. So, pretty good match all in all. The girls really pulled out all the stops in this match. I know some people didn't want to see Naomi lose, but unfortunately, in my eyes, Naomi is nothing but an entrance more than anything else. And Alexa Bliss really showed how good she is in the ring. Carmella is pretty good. She shows that her call-up wasn't a waste, and the way they ran the match, her and Nikki Bella, and still have a few going on afterwards, which is cool to see. All the ladies put it on the line. Becky Lynch didn't get a chance to get an opportunity to win the NXT Women's Championship, so it's good that she got a chance to come up to the main roster when the newly crowned SmackDown Women's Championship. So... Cool to see. The next match that came up. The next match was the second pack match for getting into the tag team championship match. It was the Usos versus the Hype Bros. Well, nobody really truly cares about the Hype Bros, so they was just basically jobbers in this match, but they put on a good effort, and the Usos are embracing being the heels, they didn't change their look up, now all they need to do is change up their interest in their theme music, and they will be full on heel, you can now know which one is which because of the way they have ties effects, and they're both coming out in dark clothes and not pandering to the crowd no more. So that's pretty cool the way the Usos got that fixed up. So they advanced to go for the tag team championship later on that night. So the next match was the Miz versus Dolph Ziggler for the Intercontinental title. Everybody knows what Miz has been talking about the last couple of weeks because of that confrontation with him and Daniel Bryan. And they played that up even more before the match with Miz asking for more money because he's an intercontinental champion. Dolph Ziggler is a good worker, but he just doesn't win the big matches. He calls himself the show-off, but you can't be the show-off if you're always losing. So, And the Miz did something I haven't seen from a heel in a long time. Cheat to win the match. Heels need to be more like that. Not trying to do all the cool stuff and get the crowd behind them. You need to cheat to win. 
So that was good to see the men's. And using his manager slash wife, Maurice, as a as an accomplice makes it even better. Good to see them using a heel team of husband and wife in the ring, cheating, and good on Miz, because Miz deserves a little bit more spotlight. And later on, we had what was supposed to be Randy Orton versus Bray Wyatt, but it got out early that Bray was not going to fight Randy Orton tonight, because Randy Orton's, I think, shoulder is messed up, but they made it look like a knee injury, so... It became a no holds bar match with him and Kane. And Kane wins because Randy Orton comes down there and puts the RKO on Bray Wyatt. This was one of the matches where Bray should have won the match. Let Randy Orton come out at the end after Bray's all squat tied and then hit him with the RKO. Bray has not won an important match yet. And even though his kind of character, he can lose, but it doesn't matter. But he needs some kind of good win. So I'm assuming when him and Randy actually has his match, this is when Bray is going to win his match. And surprising enough, the tag team title match with the Usos versus Heath Slater and WWE's legend of ECW's Rhino put on a hell of a good match for what they was being introduced to into this particular tag team tournament match. They've been building up Heath Slater as this lovable underdog that's trying to get a job. And the Usos lost. And Rhino and Heath Slater are the new we crown SmackDown Tag Team Champions. So, hats off to both of them. They put on a pretty good match. And good to see that they have a face tag team as the Tag Team Champions that you can root for the underdog. So, that's good to see. And The last match was the main event, AJ Styles versus Dean Ambrose. Ambrose and AJ put on a hell of a match. Got to give it up to both wrestlers. Dean showed why they had the belt on him. This match made up for that mediocre match they had with Dolph versus Dean for on SummerSlam for the title. Everybody in the arena was doing dual chance, but you could feel that AJ Styles was the man that they wanted to win. He won the match. He cheated. Thank God again, a heel took advantage of the referee getting bumped. Low blow. Hits his finisher and beats the champ. That does it and takes the title. That doesn't hurt Ambrose any. It makes AJ look like a stronger heel. And hopefully we get to see a title match with AJ versus John Cena. Don't put the belt on Cena. Let AJ keep that joint for a while. Let him fight Dean again, maybe. Or have somebody else challenge for the title. But for right now, this is AJ's first WWE World Championship. He worked hard to get it. He deserved having it. Still being a heel. Still showing off. Talking about he beat John Cena. Throwing in everybody's face. Perfect way to be a heel. Maybe he might have a face run. But right now, keep AJ as a heel. Pretty good pay-per-view. I enjoyed it. It went straight through from beginning to end. Not really any filler in between, no fluff, just straight wrestling. They had maybe one or two spots where it was commercial. 
The only person that had the skit was the Miz, but that fits the character for the Miz because he's trying to be all Hollywood. So all in all, this was a great pay-per-view. I see that everybody in the TWC group that was there was enjoying themselves. So that's good. Except Timmy. I know he was mad that Bray lost. Bray always loses. I don't understand why, but that's just the way WWE treats that man. Well, that's my review of Backlash. This is Wild Man Willis signing off. See you next time.